Okay, Google. Activate the Omega 13. Okay, turning Omega 13 on. Flash door is opening. Garage door is now open. Hello everyone. Welcome to my new channel. I opened this channel to give you an idea on how to build your own home automation system for under $100 if you already have Google speakers. Believe me, it's not that difficult. Let me ask a quick question. What is your first impression about smart home or home automation? A decent looking modern house, full of cutting edge appliances. All of them are connected to each other. On the refrigerator door in the kitchen, or on the mirror next to a bed. You can see a large touchscreen. The owner of this smart home returns from the work and begins to use the touchscreen with a very satisfied face. Or early in the morning, she touches the screen and makes one good cup of coffee. Yes, good days start with coffee and you. You can voice command to a smart speaker or touch a tablet to turn on and off all the lights. Draw curtains or control the room temperature. Yes. I think those are good examples of home automation. But it is not my type of home automation. I want more affordable and realistic ones. I don't have a plan to replace my refrigerator to use the touch screen. Because I already have a good working one. A brand new phone becomes outdated in only two years. If a touch screen is installed on a refrigerator, we usually expect it to work for more than 10 years. Then I don't know how long we can use the touchscreen with satisfaction and security support from the manufacturer. Turning on and off lights with voice command is beneficial in some cases. Especially when you are lying in bed and about to sleep, you don't want to get up to turn off the light, then you can use the voice command. But do you really need to turn on or off all the lights in your house with a touchscreen or voice command? When you are going up and down stairs, the easiest way to turn on the hallway light is to use your finger and manipulate the wall switch. Not a voice command or touch screen. Conversely, there is a light that can maximize your satisfaction when automatized. A few months ago, I made a system that automatically lights my driveway and porch when I approach my home during the night time. I don't touch or manipulate anything. But, by the time I arrived home, I see a bright front yard and it makes me a feeling that my home is welcoming me. And I didn't make these lights work with any voice command or touchscreen. Because I believe that true home automation is something that I really don't need to command or touch and just works for me without my involvement. I have a lot of interest in home automation and from the time the Google smart speaker was introduced, I bought many of them. Now, I have a total of seven Google Home Mini speakers and one Google Nest Hub. Two years ago, I started my own project to use voice command for opening and closing the garage door. Garage door is opening. Because I already have one proper working garage door opener, I really don't want to buy any extra so-called smart garage door opener. I just wanted to add few devices to the existing system. Garage door is now open. And achieve the level of automation that meets my expectation. But I lost my way at first because I don't know what to do and how to do. Googling and watching YouTube were somehow helpful. But they didn't give me the exact information I need. Then I finally found a free open source home automation platform called Home Assistant. Because I don't have any direct experience with other platforms, I cannot review the Home Assistant compared to other platforms. But, to me, the Home Assistant is just a fantastic tool that provides me everything I need. However, the progress of the project was very slow because the platform was based on a Linux system and there are a lot of things to change on my home network settings. I essentially had a zero knowledge of Linux and also marginal knowledge of network systems. But, as can be seen in the intro, I finally made the garage door open on my voice command. Garage door is now open. If I want, I can customize voice commands 
or make conditions to switch on and off any devices, as well as the garage door. And, based on the memos I made during the trial and error process of making my home automation, I decided to create this makeshift channel to help those who want to build their own DIY home automation systems. If you have Google speakers in your home, you can build most of them for under $100. Despite they will be made with a tight budget, I don't think their performance would be compromised in any way. Because their performance would be only limited by our imagination and creativity. But if you look closely, you can notice that I didn't care anything about the beauty, balance or any kind of harmony on what I made. I just cared about functionalities. Because it's only $100 project. Yes, this is the spirit of makeshift. I recycled broken acrylic sheets. I picked up abandoned wires. So it's not in good shape. But it is working fine for two years without any maintenance. I could add up more devices or functionalities whenever it was necessary. So now I'm going to show you what you need to buy and what you can make in the course of the $100 project presented by the Makeshift channel. First, you need to build a home automation server. A Linux based mini computer called Raspberry Pi is required for this purpose. Then you need to set up Home Assistant on the Raspberry Pi server. Home Assistant is a free open source platform. So, you will only need to buy the Raspberry Pi. There are different models of Raspberry Pis. For the purpose of Home Assistant, Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 are recommended. I used Home Assistant on both models and there are no big differences. However, in the United States, the Pi 3 and Pi 4 are sold at the same price. So, I'll put the price of Raspberry Pi 4. To properly operate the Raspberry Pi, you need to cool down some major components on the PCB. So you need to buy some heat sinks. Unfortunately, I will not include the price of the case to maintain a low project budget. But if you want, you can buy one. I used Home Assistant for more than a year without any case. More importantly, you need to buy a proper power adapter that supplies enough amperage. If the power is not enough, the Raspberry Pi would simply stop working anytime. Raspberry Pi 3 needs a micro USB connection, while Pi 4 needs a C type USB. You need to buy the power adapter according to the model of the Pi you buy. Micro SD memory card is also necessary. 32 GB is sufficient. And I will put the price I searched on the list. With items mentioned so far, you can build a pretty cool things, such as making the Google speaker to say what you want, or some notification system based on simple geofencing. There are some more things to add, and now it is becoming more functional. It is so-called Node MCU or ESP8266, a Wi-Fi based microcontroller board. I will put three of them on the list. One is required to control the garage door, and two will be used for the door and window alarm system. Magnetic door switches are also required in order to detect the states of doors and windows. Two switches will be required for the garage door and you will need one switch per window or door you want to install. For the demonstration purpose, I will assume that you will buy five pieces of switches. But you might need more or less. Here, I want to mention that, by the time we moved into my house, there were wires pre-installed inside the wall, reaching some major doors and windows for the future security alarm system. The other sides of wires were all coming out from the hole in the utility room. So, in my case, the installation was rather easy. However, for your case, you might need to install one node MCU per door. Then you also need to concern about the power supply to each of the node MCU. Or, you might need to consider some other Wi-Fi based solutions that support Home Assistant. However, it will cost you. Based on my experience, I'd like to tell you how important it is to get notified about the garage door state. Garage door is opening. We usually use push button to close the garage door when we arrive home. 
then the garage door is going down. But it was one snowy night. I pushed the button and came inside the home. But the next morning, I found that the garage door had been wide open through the night. It turned out that the garage door sensor was momentarily blocked by heavy snow. And some safety logic was activated. And the garage door opened up to prevent a situation that a human or some object stuck under the garage door. I took this video a few weeks ago on a heavy snowy night. The garage door was coming all the way down, then going up again due to some snowballs stuck under the door. Ever since that day, I had to wait at least 16 seconds after pressing the button to confirm that the garage door was closed firmly. But, after using the magnetic door switch and note MCU, it was changed like this. Garage door is now closed. Home Assistant monitors garage door state. And after the garage door closed, it waits two more seconds, then sends out a confirmation message through all Google speakers. Now, I go inside home right after pressing the button. No more 16 seconds of waiting. If the garage door opens up after I entering home, it doesn't matter. The Google speaker will send out a notification message about not closed door every 10 minutes. Garage door is not closed for a while. Then, let's also add the functionality of opening the garage door with a custom voice command. Because the same node MCU that detects garage door status will cover the opening function, we don't need to buy an extra node MCU. And there are two methods to create a custom voice command that can be used for Google Speaker to transfer the user's intention to Home Assistant. One is to subscribe a plan and pay monthly. The other method is a little bit complicated, but it is free. Of course, we will use the free method. The Node MCU needs to transmit a signal to the garage opener to open the garage door. For doing this wirelessly, I decided to reuse an extra remote control. So, I don't add the remote control on the price list. I connected one digital output pin of the Node MCU to a relay. And this relay output is wired to the remote control button through a hole. By doing so, the Node MCU can do the act of pushing the remote control button. So if I add the price of the relay, the amount of money required to open the garage door through the voice command comes up. Now I will mention a new functionality recently added to the system. It is illuminating the front side of the house. Houses always look better at night with front lights are on. But it will add some amount of money to your electricity bill. Some of the houses in my town always turn on the driveway and porch light during the night time. And it is really nice looking. I also wanted my home to look nice. Then I thought differently. Wouldn't it be enough if it looks nice to my eyes only? So let's make the lights on only when I see it. I bought a couple of smart Wi-Fi switches called SunOff, and I flashed two of the switches firmware so that they can interact with the home assistant. Then, I installed these tiny switches inside the wall mount switch. The home assistant is smarter than you think. If you put the location of your house on home assistant, it can calculate the times of sunrise and sunset, which change depending on the location and season. So, we can add a sunset condition in the process of the garage door opening. If the garage door opens during the nighttime, the front lights will be on. And, also using the geofencing function, you can make your home turn on the welcoming lights some seconds before you arrive at home. Let's add the price of these sun-off switches. Yes, the total price is still under $100, and you can build all the home automation systems that I've shown to you. In the upcoming videos, I will show you how to make home automation systems I've shown to you, and few extra ones that I didn't show you yet. People who are not familiar with Linux and Network can count on me. I'll present in the easiest way to follow. And the garage door opener is just an example. If you live in a condo, and don't need to automatize the garage door, it is fine. Once you can customize the voice command for Google speaker and process input and output through Node MCU, you are ready to make your own home automation system that will perfectly work for you. 
The purpose of this channel is to introduce a cost-effective methodology for home automation so that everyone can enjoy easier life. In the first few videos, we will use only Google speakers and Raspberry Pi. Without Node MCU, we still can build simple but interesting home automation systems. After that, we will implement more complex systems with Node MCU. By this time, we will do some coding or update the firmware of the Node MCU to use it for our purposes. You can watch the series of makeshift videos and choose what to buy based on your purposes and interests. Before ending this video, I have one thing to remark. If your Wi-Fi password is not secure enough, please change it now. As more Wi-Fi devices will be connected to your home network, it is a good time to make your home network secure. At this moment, I already have more than 50 Wi-Fi devices connected. Someday, if you realize that your Wi-Fi password is too weak, you might need to climb up the ladder to reconfigure already installed IoT devices. So, change it now. It could be more than a half-day job. The next video will deal with the installation of the Home Assistant. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.